so welcome everyone and thank you for joining today so let's uh, just take a moment of silence before we start the reading today So let's start. There's a little background noise. I don't know if it's audible to all of you. So it's raining and it's just dripping. So sorry for that. Yeah. So we uh, last time stopped at uh, page number thirty-three, and we have to start, I believe, from from here. But just to have a kind of a continuation let's take an overlap so we'll just read through the first one and then uh, we take up the newer one today so yeah let's take from here now what are the causes of this imbalance yeah so anyone who would like to go ahead for uh, reading please yeah monica i'll go uh, yes yes from this no what are the causes of this imbalance right from there hello monica yes. from there yes. only yes yes, oh, yes. Okay. now what are the causes of this imbalance whatever it may be as i told you just now the causes are innumerable because first of all there are all the inner causes that is those personal to you and then all the external causes those that come to you from outside that makes two major categories the internal causes we said you have a brain lungs a heart a stomach a liver etc etc if each one does its duty and works normally and if all move together in harmony at the required moment and in the right way note that it is very complicated if you had to think of all that i am afraid things would not go very well all the time fortunately it does not depend on our conscious thought but say they are in good harmony with another good friends a perfect agreement and each one is fulfilling its task its movement at the right time in step with the rest neither too soon nor too late neither too fast nor too slow in short everyone is fine you are marvelously well suppose now that one of them for some reason or other happens to be in a bad mood it does not work with the necessary energy at the required moment it is more or less on strike do not believe that it will be ill by itself the whole system will go wrong and you will feel altogether unwell and if unfortunately there is a vital imbalance that is a disappointment or too violent an emotion or too strong a passion or something else upsetting your vital that comes and aggravates it and if an addition your thoughts roam about and you begin to have dark ideas and formulate frightful things and make catastrophic formations then after that you are sure to fall quite ill you see the complication that is a new one na huh, today yes yes okay okay shall i continue yes please, anyone yes. you see the complication don't you 
just a tiny thing can go wrong and and this through an inner contagion can lead to something very serious so what is important is to control things immediately one must be conscious conscious of the working of one's organs aware of any that is not behaving properly telling it immediately what is to be done to set itself right suppose for example your heart begins to throb madly then you must make it calm you tell it that this is not the way to act and at the same time just help it just to help it you take in long very regular rhythmic breaths that is the lungs become the mentor of the heart and teach it how to work properly and so on i could give you countless examples thank you sarathi thank you monica yeah so yeah beautiful any, monica uh, beautiful yeah. we are just going into that yeah so i just want to share one you know personal experience here see yesterday uh, from midnight i don't know i i got up you know for drinking water my head started spinning very badly i couldn't resist and you know i was um, making myself all right but i couldn't manage myself so i woke my ha- husband up he said what happened <laughs> and i said my head is spinning i am not able to even hold my water bottle and drink water so somehow i drank water again i uh, you know start tried to sleep that time you know something in me was telling you enna mo something was not all right that is why you know the head is spinning you know another thing which came to me my brother you know he passed away in covid you know one and a half years back so he fell down actually from the cot when he was saying that his head was spinning then he was calling his wife like that only he fell down and he collapsed so you know unnecessarily all that thought came to me oh like this only he also got the head spin <laughs> what will i do if i fall down so better wake my husband up so i woke him up everything was all right you know but after that i i was speaking to myself no nothing is going to happen to you you are going to be all right and you know something you know parallelly my imagination was going on to morning how am i going to get up which doctor i am going to see what is what is going to happen to me mira's wedding should happen <laughs> you know all the things you know see like uh, tele serials everything was happening in front of me then i said shut up nothing is going to happen tomorrow morning 5:15 you are get up getting up doing your meditation you are going to make coffee you are going to cook everything nothing is going to go wrong to you then you know i was you know consoling myself and i was you know this is the first time monica i started speaking to my body shut up nothing is wrong with you <laughs> then morning 6:30 i got up it was a bit late but i thought it's okay it's okay you are allowed to sleep today <laughs> so i got up at 6:30 i made everything and you know i'm all right now but you know when i spoke to my body i felt very happy at least you know uh, my body is able to listen i am able to speak to the body <laughs> i was so happy you know pro- probably all this because of this integral healing what we read here and you know i could try to you know practice it thank you so much thanks for the sessions yeah, yeah beautiful thank you thank you for sharing just one question <laughs> you know you were asking or you were sharing in fact uh, uh, what about meera's wedding that should happen what yeah. about her children they should also happen <laughs> before you <laughs> cross over <laughs> you could have gone that far i, I want to see her children also <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's funny and i i mean what you shared really very beautiful you know the and uh, you look good i mean what you were sharing that now i am okay so you sound really good so it's really yeah powerful you know when mother's grace is continuously yeah. consciously working you know it's really very powerful beautiful yeah. and you know after some time only i realized that i didn't think about the mother I was mm. continuously thinking about what is going to happen to me tomorrow morning which doctor because you know i am so scared of this mri 
you yo if if they ask me to take mri how will i go into that then uh, after that only you know that my you know thought process was you know going on in jet speed and i thought shut up enough nothing is going Beautiful. to go wrong i told myself Beautiful. two three times yeah then i immediately i could see the change in myself i had some you know disturbance but still i could manage you know everything was so perfect in the morning yeah beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. yeah thank you this, thank you for sharing monica this integral book is available in shabda it is there yeah yeah Physical. of course yes okay. integral healing you find it in shabda yes okay okay uh, pdf i i think i had shared earlier on the group also but if you want the hard copy it should be available on shabda yeah yeah okay okay Yeah. yeah and if you don't mind can you share once more this pdf pdf yes i can yeah. send it again on the group yes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. thank you monica thank you yeah. hey thank you thank you for sharing yeah anyone wants to add on or share any so i think what sharda ji just shared i think uh, she talked about uh, how we do this if and how we can actually make a shift in our consciousness so if in addition your thoughts roam about and you begin to have dark ideas and formulate frightful things and make catastrophic formations then after that you are sure to fall quite ill and this is what you shared that you were able to like put a halt to uh, which is again nothing but mother's grace and even you know when we are reading these uh, things and reflecting upon it nothing is actually going to work without her grace being active so yeah it's just that it's her grace yeah i'm very happy to hear so yeah if anyone wants to share anything here or or on the new passage that we read please do and what you shared also resonates in this paragraph so what is important is to control things immediately so the moment you said with a will you know from within with a central will you said stop you know not shut up or nothing is going to really happen so that there was a power mother's power that worked you know the divine power that worked through that will and that's how it was just able to put a hold and i'm sure you know of course you know, many many forces at work but no part of our being should want to be ill so that is very important and that is how the will becomes very powerful otherwise i can say set up but some parts of my body are still weak or vital are still weak and they are wanting to be ill you know they are still wanting to you know, go through that process so then it's not that powerful uh, the thing that you shared you know with that much power it acted so yeah and i'm sure what you shared many of us may have experiences like that where uh, we notice this constant vicious loop of thinking and then at times we are able to put a halt to it yeah and one more thing i was you know asking myself why do you want to you know become ill what is making you you know do you want any attention all that i asked myself please don't do that you know other says you know we have read so many times something in you wants to be ill you know wants to get ill so i was asking myself beautiful beautiful yeah. stop that was beautiful this is the yeah. first time i have done usually i'll yeah. be scared or you know i'll be you know talking to some in myself within myself on the i'll keep you know all the conversation but this time it was beautiful thank you so much yeah yeah thank you so this breathing thing also is uh, very beautiful i think many a times we have touched upon in our discussions reflections that Uh, if we change the rhythm of the breathing pattern of the breathing then that also takes away that dark cloud or the disturbance that has come if we don't want to succumb to it so mother herself is sharing that suppose 
for example your heart begins to throb madly then you must make it calm you tell it that this is not the way to act and at the same time just to help it you take in long very regular rhythmic breath so uh, in one of the sessions taru uh, had shared that when uh, any disturbing emotion happens whether it's anger jealousy ambition any anything which is not very easy in our being our breathing changes you know it, it is not rhythmic anymore it it like become shorter shallower or maybe you know restless more agitated so when we either we work with the mind and then the breath uh, breathing becomes normal or vice versa so we work on the breathing and then the emotion and the mental confusion is taken care of so both ways it can work and uh, breath has been uh, talked about by many masters as a way of cutting through these disturbing emotions this cyclic pattern of breathing or a rhythmic breathing or becoming conscious of our breath the way it is working so anything that that works for us so very regular rhythmic breath that is the lungs become the mentor of the heart and teach it how to work properly yeah so very powerful again this uh, little tool that mother is giving us yeah anything here anyone before we move next Okay, so we can move on then. Page number thirty-four. Yeah, anyone who would like to read the new passage for us. I don't know if you can hear me. Yes, yes, we can. Okay, okay, I can read. So, all right. We say then that there is balance between the different parts of the being, this harmony in their working. That is what I have just told you. <clears throat> and then there are internal conflicts. There are these are quarrels. And there are internal quarrels among the, the different parts of yourself. Suppose there is an organ. It happens often that needs rest. And there is another that wants action, and both at the same time. How are you going to handle it? They begin to quarrel. If you do what one wants, the other protests, and so you have to find a middle term to put them in harmony. And then at times, if to the physical you add the vital and mental. You have a battlefield, and this battlefield can become the cause of all possible illnesses. They fight violently. One wants something, the other does not. They quarrel, and you are in a kind of internal whirlwind. That can give you a fever; it usually does. Or else you are seized by an inner shivering. And you have no more control. For the most important of all causes of bodily illness is that the body begins to get restless. It trembles, and the trembling increases more and more, more and more. And you feel that you will never be able to re-establish the balance. It eludes you. Then, in that case, you must know. What the dispute is about, the reason for the dispute, and find out how to reconcile the people within you. Interesting word, the people within you.
Yeah, very interesting. Yeah, any thoughts? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Monica, um, how to understand, you know, this? there is a quarrel in, inside, you know, internal quarrel. The body, you know, with the body's reaction, not able to be very clear in this. There are internal quarrels among uh, the different parts of yourself. Suppose there is an organ. It happens very often. The one that needs rest and the another wants to action, wants action. And both at the same time, how are you going to handle it? So this will show in the body. That's what the mother is saying. Yeah, so I think uh, here uh, regarding the quarrel she's talking about, say, for example, uh, mm -hmm. I may have uh, a backache. Mm -hmm. But the legs are feeling good. Mm -hmm. The back would want uh, to rest. Mm -hmm. But the legs maybe want to move. Mm -hmm. So here she is talking about uh, the different parts of the physical one, the one you know she is talking of. And then later on she adds that then you add on the vital and the mental. So that comes later. But right okay. now regarding this quarrel, I feel uh -huh. that she is talking only about that uh, the physical parts of our being or different organs in us. Oh. One may want activity and the other may want uh, rest. rest. Okay. Now, what are you going to do? And this we have seen in our families. One mm -hmm. child wants to read. The mm -hmm. other says, no, I want to go out. You know, and they both are little. You can't leave them alone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what to do? You know, how to negotiate mm -hmm. and how to uh, bring harmony. So that's what I think he is talking of. Beautiful. <laughs> so many times this happens. No, We will not understand what it is. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And then she says that if in this in between this quarrel that is happening between the different physical parts of the being, if you add the vital and the mental, so you begin to reason with yourself, I must be doing this, but I'm not doing this. You know, emotionally, some, uh, some emotion comes, some feeling is starting to going to kind of trickle into that physical thing that is going on. Then mother says, then it's a the kind of a situation. You, know, you have a battle feel now. So what would you do? And this, now it is. it started with a little trickle and then it expanded, expanded and then the vital got added, the mental got added and then we have, mother says that then it can even be, become the cause of all possible illnesses. So that is what uh, we have to become conscious of that before it turns into a big battlefield, how to be, be vigilant and conscious and each and every ripple in the body and the being, we are able to see that, oh, you know, now it has started to happen, like you were sharing your own example, so that the harmony can be brought in sooner than later. Yeah. Yeah. And this, I, I think this is, I'm sure all of us have, uh, you know, experienced this in the body, this restlessness in the body. Either uh, the cause is vital plus mental or just totally physical. But this restless and the restlessness which can arise out of fear or anxiety of like Sadhaji was sharing, you know, uh, thinking about what's going to happen and all the mental formations that we add on to it. So it, it really affects the whole being and rather than uh, removing the obstacle, it creates like a big problem in front of you know, the being. So this, uh, I think this restlessness is uh, very important. For the most important of all causes of bodily illness is the body begins to get restless. What will happen? What will happen? You know? So we begin to panic and that shiver we can feel in the cells of the body if we are conscious. It trembles and the trembling increases more and more, more and more. And you feel that you will never be able to reestablish the balance. So there, mother is giving us a tool, I think, which later on she explores further. Then in that case, you must know what the dispute is. 
why is that restlessness increasing why is uh, are the people inside us as she shares you know beautifully they fighting what is the root of their fight so then in that case you must know what the dispute is about the reason for the dispute and find out how to reconcile the people within you beautiful really yeah and then she talks about reason yeah so anything here before we move on to the reason Uh, so just another example that was coming to my mind monica <clears throat> about the different parts of our being not in sync and quarreling with each other and this often we all must have experienced in relation to food so the we are not hungry the stomach is not hungry but our favorite dishes in front of us and the mind you know there is this let's say the greed or whatever wanting to eat even if the stomach is full bloated or sometimes it might not be full but sometimes you might have an acidity and you must give it a rest but at the same time you know your need or your hunger or whatever you're wanting to eat and if at that moment that thing is not balanced then it lands up into a bigger trouble discomfort so you know this just came to my mind while we were reading that and then there are so many other examples yeah yeah thank you yeah i'm sure all of us can resonate with that yeah, yeah. i think this greed aspect comes from the vital as mother says you know that the vital pokes in everything otherwise she says that the body is very docile no but Uh, this greed aspect is coming from the vital. It is it, it's poking yeah. in the yeah. in the physical. Right. Just different aspects of the being, you know, each one wanting something else. Sometimes one wanting to rest and the other wanting action. <laughs> This right. often happens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And even when there is a need for sleep, some sometimes, but there is another need that one has to finish some work and one wants to because in the in that mind itself in that very mind that you know the, the body needs sleep let's say but the mind is so restless because there is something important some work in the mind stuck up on you you can't stop that uh, that thought which is coming again and again that you have to finish it and in that process probably the sleep gets disturbed it's not a restful sleep and i guess this is this could be one of the examples you know the mind body disconnect so body's needs overlooked because we are so much living in our thoughts probably yeah all the time yeah i, I think if we keep talking and thinking there would be so many more examples coming up yeah i'm sure yes yes yeah i think that's why the need of uh, getting in touch with the inner inner being like uh, what shri aurobindo mother they use the word higher vital mm -hmm. higher vital because the outer vital that is there which is mostly active in us that's very uh, it's just very sticky i i don't know of any other good word <laughs> to use it's just very very sticky it is poking in everything because it is you know like full of this kind of a sense of greed and want and you know like this in incompletion within so if we remain in the surface consciousness then we continue uh, to live in the sense of lack and then more consumption and really nothing happens that makes us even more hungry but uh, the when we begin to understand that this is what it is doing to us and then we try to quieten down the surface and go deeper within and get in touch with the higher vital in mothers and shurabindo's terminology uh, if it is pure uh, you know it is purer and it is devoted and yet non sticky it has devotion it has emotion it has everything you know all the deeper emotions but there is no like this stickiness like give me i want to fulfill that is not there in the higher vital 
like more of self giving is there yeah and 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 as you, as we are also doing in the savitri sessions that you know that release from subjection to the body you know that is so so i mean while reading one is getting so much of understanding and awareness of the fact that one has known it but one has to practice it and while we are reading it also it is the more you read it seeps in it you kind of remind yourself and so body's needs and body's body will always and we are so used to identifying with it so strongly so whatever it demands of us we tend to give in to that but you know also to read that to how to you know release from subjection to the body that's all about that the very basic is to control the start of the very point is to work on the mind the level of the mind yeah no. yeah yeah really yeah. yeah i think it, that's why they say uh, you know a few masters they talk about a good company you are you know uh, keeping and this reading words of mother and shorobindo is a good company to the mind because as you were sharing that it percolates in us and mm-hmm. sooner or later from just a mental and mental and intellectual understanding it will become the life it will it has to become our life you know, very soon yeah. Yeah. thank you yeah thank you yeah anyone uh, wants to add yes i was thinking like also uh, and this is something sri arobindo points it's like sometimes our mind is like an advocate to to the bad will of our vital like for example your vital craves for something that is not very good and then your mind says well it starts to explain why is it a good idea to maybe today like like we have to to be very honest and and not to use our intellect our mind to to justify in a twisted way many of our uh, not so good cravings and, uh, and stuff yeah very important yeah very important i think that's yeah. why uh, that's why coming forward of the psychic is uh, stressed upon too heavily again and again uh, it is just stressed upon just get in touch with your psychic you know go after it like not aggressively but of course you know because then uh, we can't trust as you were sharing you know we, we can't trust the vital we can't trust the mental because even its reasoning gets distorted through the mental vital pressure <laughs> and then even the physical what are my true needs who knows because the vital also pokes there the mental also pokes there so what is really true and that is why the psychic uh, the sooner it comes to front that psychic light the true light you know then a true uh, realization of what is true and what is a desire and what is a want and what is a true need that can be discerned more clearly so purity in the being purification a continuous purification of the being so that the psychic can shine on you know and because otherwise we really can't trust <laughs> can't trust the mental can't trust the vital can't trust the physical because everything is mixed up you know and tangled into each other so yeah very true very true and important yes and i, it, I think it was important this, this you said about the higher vital with ideals and uh, like in this approach in this integral approach we will, maybe if it was a more ascetic path we, we may like stop the vital and like um, you know follow a mental rule about what we have to do and what not or uh, but but in this path we we have to to invite every part of our being and, and try to find a, a way to all work together uh, and the vital is also a uh, so important part it, it gives us the, the, the will the strength uh, so 
So, so we have to uh, sometimes deal with it in an intelligent way. Like we don't want it to to, to abandon the race, but also not to to, to let it ruin our balance. Yeah, yeah. I think as mother says, you know, the vital is like the engine, the powerhouse. And if the powerhouse becomes disappointed, then we have a big trouble. <laughs> you know, then it says, no, I am not going to move now. I have my own demands. So that's why what you were sharing, I yes, it's a, and again, the discussion on it is really not enough. I'm just touching upon it, we have to read mothers and show in those uh, what they have extensively talked upon. Um, uh, Shiorabindo has talked upon uh, sadhana through the level, uh, through the vital in letters on yoga. So that really, uh, I think we can all resonate with that a lot because uh, in their letters, what the sadhaks exchange, it is our life, you know, that they are asking about. So, yes. Yes, Taru, you wanted to uh, add something? Yeah, just on a different note, like, you know, through these readings, it appears that, I mean, it always is there and yet it seemed really far that one can also be connected to the internal vital organs, right? So like one is say, okay, you gave the example of the back and the leg, right? That they wanting different things. And somehow it appears that mother talks about all things in the body, right? Like I call myself the body, yet I hardly know about the body. And it's becoming more and more evident through these readings that if I am still and if I connect, I will be able to see the workings of the different things. You know, we have read about these things, right? So yogis and Buddhism, they talk about a lot that how you can control your breathing, People, sadhus can stop their heartbeats for I don't know how long. And yet, the way it's said, it feels very simple right now. Like, you know, okay, no, which, which organ is going restless? No, this. So maybe the fact that we cannot know it is not a fact, right? Like, the maybe again, it's myself who's stopping myself from. Knowing because we do know from countless examples that there are people who have control over certain things, right? If the situation has demanded it. So maybe we don't have to wait for really extreme situation. And when we, you know, sit in stillness and all, we can also extend it just that a little bit more opening and consciousness to just connecting, right? Like say, hello, liver, <laughs> something like this, that, you know, aware that I am looking at you, I'm seeing. So it's very, it's surreal. And yet, for the first time, it's feeling that it's possible for me. Like, I mean, I don't know if it is, but it's appearing to be, yes, I. it's possible. Yeah, thank you. Um, I have always considered myself and I, I think that I'm a very emotional person driven quite quite by the vital and so I came across what Monica was referring about um, vital mother writing that um, vital as the engine in your sadhana and in one place also I came across that she said that um, if it is has to be compared with the mind, the sadhana done by the mind and of the vital, uh, vital will be much put on the higher pedestal than the mind uh, if it, it if it is purified enough. But somehow I still didn't understand because uh, it is vital is also something which is very restless. I mean, with mind and with this, it it makes you very restless in many things. And um, I was just reading and listening to a podcast by Ramdas, who's also a spiritual uh, guide and a leader. And I, he spoke about two dimensions um, of our being. The one is the divine self, the psychic self, of course, we understand. And the other dimension is this human self. And 
both of it when till the time we are in this incarnation are there are a part of us um, and he says that sometimes in the spiritual path we tend to ignore our human self a lot without really transcending it you have to really transcend it and it is a long process but without really transcending it if you ignore your human part um you will always be lost um even if you think that you have identified with the divine part and he gave example of intense suffering that's there in the world and he says that how you have to really understand it with both the human self and the divine self so if you situate yourself in the human self you have a lot like a vital you know in that sense vital i see becomes a really strong part because the vital has a lot of compassion uh, for somebody um, if you see somebody who is ill or if there is a suffering in the world and you feel a lot of compassion and pain for them if feel like doing something you know to elevate that suffering whereas the, your divine divine self will be rested in in knowing that everything is perfect there's nothing wrong that's happening and he says that both you have to really situate situate yourself in both of these level of your existence where you know and you know that what is happening is right no matter how brutal it might look and sound but it is it is like you know it is it is a form of evolution that's happening and everything is perfect the way it is but at the same time on your human level you still have compassion you still do things to kind of alleviate that suffering because you are human. I, mean, i really liked it because why it till in that sense becomes like as mother says the engine of our working where you work towards you know tonglen for example or you know different practices where you help to elevate your and other people's suffering knowing that it is right true so i really like that kind of and it made sense as well what why vital is important in sadhana that was very beautiful nandini the why uh, the human and the spiritual self and i uh, often on a spiritual journey i feel that because um, when you establish an inner I mean, even in the beginning where there are moments when you feel very calm within and they have those glimpses and moments of calmness and reading and all that in you you have to dissociate yourself from many things so sometimes when you are also established in that calmness and when you see things happening unpleasant around you just as you said that the divine self within you would say that it is fine but to the people around who need your compassionate and maybe that self that empathy uh you sometimes you know you 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 brought it up and i i felt that many a times it has happened with me because within myself i feel so uh, so uh, you know that that trust is there that faith is there that everything will be fine but it uh, but it might also come across as indifferent being indifferent to the suffering of others so uh, thank you for bringing it forward because it will help all of us to show that you know because that's also important because all of us are at different levels and sometimes we also need it when it we are faced with certain situations not that you know when others are able to empathize with us it helps us you know in some way so that was one thing that you said it really very nice thank you for that and another thing that i got reminded of what uh, in bhagavad gita what shri krishna uh, says that of all the bhaktas you know there is this path of knowledge there is this path of action and there is this path of uh, devotion and he says through any path you know you can reach up to me but of all these paths arjun is asking you know the so many questions that which is the easiest or which is the best and which is that and shri krishna did say that of all the past of all the path you know the one who jo mujhe bhakti se pyar se jo mujhe 
पाना चाहता है अगर उसके प्यार में सच्चाई है तो मैं हाथ बढ़ा के उसे ऊपर खींचता हूँ सो दैट इज द इमोशन एंड वेन यू टॉक अबाउट दैट वाइटल दैट इज देयर इन ऑल ऑफ एस एंड डूइंग अ वाइटल साधना अकॉर्डिंग टू मी वुड मीन दैट यूजिंग योर डिवोशन that purity that love that outpouring of that love and that is that in itself is divine isn't that the essence of divinity in us and if that outpouring is if at all it happens you know that that purified if one is that even even god is a very is 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 a very possessive love or he is waiting he says that you know you have to think of nothing else but just me totally uh you know an obsessive thought towards me you possess me and be possessed by me so that you and i don't are not two two but we become one so that i think uh, a bhakti is is one of the things which uh, which is i won't say easy or not easy because it is to everyone it is so one can be easy the other can be difficult but it is each one of us have our own characteristic nature and to each their own way but it is very beautiful so i thought this is what came to my mind when you were talking about what is a vital sadhana it would probably mean that reaching or reaching realizing that god or divinity through the path of bhakti that bhav yeah i don't know if i <laughs> yeah thank you yeah thank you there is one thing which i'm uh, i i'm hoping that uh, those of us interested they would search and read about it because mother and shorobindo have distinguished between psychic bhakti and vital bhakti and they have uh, for they have said that vital bhakti again read and understand yourself but just pointing a little that where you have more sense of longing and separation like viraha as we say that you are crying for divine and that they have said to be the vital bhakti and that that makes us a little bit limited like we are stuck in the role of this bhakta who is always crying and you know wanting the divine uh, always there is longing and separation is there so they have uh, it's, it's, the vital bhakti and bhakti itself are not the same so just uh, sharing about it throwing it out in the air that we, we we should read about it and that's why they talk about psychic bhakti because that's not at the level of vital and in psychic bhakti there is this deep certitude of uh, being with the divine and there there is no longing and separation and crying for the divine same in human love if you see you know that uh, there are kinds of uh, what we call call love where you are just wanting 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 uh, to be in one or the other way with the other person and then there is this psychic love where there there is deep certitude of being one with the other person and there is no restlessness or agitation to get it some way so uh, the diff- there is a difference between psychic love vital love psychic bhakti vital bhakti so yeah and again it's not very black and white so i would suggest uh, going through in maybe on incarnate word uh, for people who are interested what is the difference yeah. so one thing uh, which comes here is uh, settling down the restlessness you know before we come to reasons also mother talks about reasons that you must know the reason of the dispute you know this restlessness once i was going through a very uh, like a deep phase of restlessness and i wanted to get stable and then suddenly uh, i was just lying down and some experiment i was doing with myself to settle down myself and in the lower abdominal part i just experienced a very deep peace settling in and once that settled in all my restlessness which was really really troubling troubling me uh, from mostly from the vital agitation that just went away i don't know how it went away 
and then later on in the words of mother shyorabindu i read that the seat of the lower vital the seat of desire wanting you know demand that is the lower abdominal part and if you are able to settle deep peace in that lower abdominal part then uh, that vital agitation restlessness you know emotional overhaul whatever is taking place that can be taken care of so that also you for those who are who are troubled by it you can read it again on incarnate world Monica, lower can vital can you please repeat oh, sorry can you please repeat the last part okay so uh, last part the, the one that you talk about the you just said about the peace in the lower abdomen yeah so i was sharing that when we are troubled by a lot of vital emotion you know uh, lots of wants expectations desires are there which are not getting fulfilled and what do i do what do i do what do i do right you know there is lots of unsettlement in the being that restlessness i was sharing that i experienced that during one of my phases very strongly and the whole body was also impacted by it and when once i was just lying down uh doing some experimentation with how to stabilize myself in the lower abdominal region i felt a deep peace coming in like a really solid tangible kind of something settling in like now it is settled that's what i felt and then after that my restlessness was gone which was really troubling me making me really so uh, very very miserable then i am sharing this later on i found in letters on yoga by sri aurobindo where he talks about sadhana at the level of vital that how these lower vital things have to be transmuted there he talked about settling a deep peace in the lower abdominal region if one wants to take care of uh, the restlessness coming from the lower vital which are the demands and you know uh, wants and expectations so yes Sure. Let's go through the reasons then. What is the dispute about? And then mother talks about the reasons. So anyone who would like to read. you see there are reasons many reasons numberless reasons for all these things combined in an extraordinarily complex way and in order to know in order to be able to cure an illness one must find out its cause not its microbe for it happens that excuse me i hope there are no doctors here it happens that when microbes are there they find out magnificent remedies to kill the microbes but these remedies cure some and make others much worse nobody knows why perhaps i know why because the illness had another cause than the purely physical one there was something else this was only an outer expression of a different disorder when unless you touch that discover that disorder you will never be able to prevent the illness from coming Yeah, thank you. Anyone? Anything on this? You know, for me, it feels like what you share about your experience, right? About cancer and about the conflict that you felt when you were doing your PhD. That how can it just be physical? 
and I don't have the person in front of me. I just have, you know, blood samples and they're asking me to find a cure. So it just seems that this is exactly what is being said here. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, this also, uh, I'm reminded of uh, these recent uh, things on COVID vaccines. And Mother is sharing here, uh, I think, exactly as if I could just, when you were reading it, it, that was just coming to my mind, that it happens that when microbes are there, they find out magnificent remedies to kill the microbes. But these remedies cure some and make others much worse. This is exactly what we have seen uh, in case of specially, and I'm sure there are more examples, but especially these recent COVID vaccines where many, many, many people uh, who I have met, my friends have met, my friends who are doctors, they have met, who are doing absolutely okay health-wise. But when they got injected with these vaccines, again, not all of them, but many, many, uh, they uh, their situations actually became more worse. And again, not saying that what actually created the illness, not as mother says that these are extraordinarily complex things, you know, that occur. But for many friends of uh, mine, their, for example, autoimmune conditions became worse, you know, after the vaccination. Some people actually, and uh, leukemia, you know, leukemia is usually... There are different reasons, but after vaccine, many people, and again, these, these are not statistical results, but just through word of mouth here and there, uh, just generally healthy people got leukemia. And again, I'm not saying that it is only because of the vaccine, but as mother shares, that so many other reasons are there. And the outer reason is only an outer expression of the inner disorder. And I feel that still we are in a blessed situation, even when, you know, some situation is becoming worse. Because that situation which is becoming worse, it is my conduit or it is my, one can say, staircase to unite with my uh, true self. Because otherwise everything is going okay, okay, nobody wants to change. You know? But now when there is a life-threatening situation in front of me, with vaccine, without vaccine, doesn't matter. Again, not to take it that uh, hardly, rigidly here. But now is my chance to really get to the root of it and unite with who am I truly, what I have been ignoring so far. So I think this is, again, uh, what Taru is also pointing at, that, you know, what is the true cause of that disorder. Like when I, she was sharing about autoimmune, when I was studying autoimmune diseases, you know, then just studying the physical blood samples, you know, something doesn't make sense. You know, just through that, you will be able to find the cure. You know, how is that possible? Are we just a blood? Am I just blood or is it more to me? If there is more to me, then that also has to be considered. So unless you touch that, you know, the inner disorder, the root of it, discover that disorder, you will never be able to prevent the illness from coming. So I think just all through these passages, more and more an invocation to become more and more conscious of what we call as our self. What Taru in the beginning pointed out as that, wow, I can become conscious of my organ. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> so that is a possibility. So becoming conscious of our organs. Being intimate with. And this intimacy we all crave for. This, this is the intimacy we crave for through other people. When we want to be intimate in relationships. But when I develop a true intimacy in my own self. Then I, I lose that handicap of wanting it through other beings, which again, we are all interconnected, but just this continuous asking that is there in our mind, that can stop.
when we develop a beautiful friendship not even at the level of thoughts but also feelings and then also organs and the physical consciousness so that's also our possibility yeah so anything any uh, last comments here from anyone i think also one thing comes to me here that since there are extraordinary complex ways in which the same thing may happen we also have to see that not the same formula will work for everyone the crux or essence may be the same but at times you know we we become really deluded we say that oh uh, you know i had this illness and i cured it by this veganism or you know this by this ayurveda or that thing and that may actually work for someone but that will not work for everyone since uh, we are not just one single machine we are very complex and you know uh, we may be alike in the sense that we have all a mind life and a physical and also a spirit in that sense we may be alike but we don't know where exactly is the disorder happening which where is the root for for each cancer the root may be different right so that i think that puts us back on the ground that if veganism may work for me it may not necessarily cure the other one okay. so if, again we lose that rigidity that from time to time we bring in ourselves and same with pranayama or anything you know i may say that oh you know i was getting up every morning 5 o'clock in the morning and that's what cured me you know i did this and that and that and that and i did it with a lot of discipline now mother says that you think uh, ayurveda homeopathy or anything else is curing you there is only one thing that cures as which is divine grace and your faith only that cures nothing else cures so that i think this realization puts me again back on the ground that i am not the doer of my healing i am not healing myself there is something else that is you know maybe i am uh, the grace is helping me to open to with which the healing is happening yeah. yes yes nandini no oh, i just uh, when you were saying about how divine grace cures you also just read few uh, some months ago um, about the difference between curing and healing and um it says that curing is always this um our predisposition of going back to how we were before an illness happened and healing is actually um a process of moving closer to the god you know or moving closer to yourself um and hence evolving with the help of an illness so i Voluntary that when the divine grace sometimes heals, the result might not be that okay that person lived ten years or survived that illness. It could be it could be, um, just dying happily, as well without any fear and transitioning into something different. I mean that's also very important about how we understand healing and curing because many people even when they are spiritual and illness comes and the insistence is oh you know i know my faith is that i will be like how i was but and i was the same as well but now as i like after reading and seeing things i just feel that it's just trusting that whatever is going to unfold through my faith will be my healing not curing and in fact it's very much better and good if we don't be what we were before otherwise illness wouldn't wouldn't have come there is something that has to be transformed so i really like that curing and healing and to really understand them differently that really beautiful yeah thank you thank you for sharing yeah. Yeah. anyone else wants to add on before the end
Yeah, Monica, on the lines that you were just talking about that who cures, right? Like it's not, it's so different every time. So during COVID time, I had some, you know, that hand allergy, right? Like severe allergies on my hand. I tried everything, you know, according to me, homeopathy, regular and stuff, stuff but nothing seemed to be working. And then, in, you know, in addition to other things, finally, you know, somebody told me something and that worked. And it was like, okay, great, this worked. Now I know. So the next time it again started resurfaced, my mind was so cleverly, you know, proud that now I know how to take care of it. And the same thing which worked like a miracle the first time felt like what are you doing? It has like zero effect. So the same condition, I'm the same person, same hand, seemingly ex exactly the same allergy. And yet when I approached it from a point of I know, it was zero effect. And suddenly I realized what I was doing. You know, the problem is that we are so blind to these arrogances and these I knows that one doesn't even know. And then I just, you know, obviously went to the mother that, sorry, now you tell me, you know, whenever you, you show me what works. And then within a few days, I got something new that affected that time. And since then, I have not made that mistake. And I just go silent and I'm like, okay, let's see what works. So this, I know I've got it. It's so beautiful if it's broken every time so that, you know, and I'll tell you 10 other people how to do it. Yes, yeah, so it's very important. Yeah. Thank you. You know, your sharing reminds me of one of the Kabir's couplets where he says, <clears throat> सूरा सो ही सराहिए लड़ा धनी के खेत पुरजा पुरजा होई पड़े ताऊ न छाड़े खेत नो सो ही सेज यू शुड अप्रिशिएट दैट वॉरियर हु ओनली स्टैंड्स फॉर ट्रुथ लाइक यू वर शेयरिंग यू नो दिस एग्जांपल एंड इवन व्हेन ही इज बीइंग स्टैटर्ड पुरजा पुरजा होई पड़े इन द बैटलफील्ड लाइक यू वर शेयरिंग यू नो वन वन मस्ट एक्चुअली टेक ऑन दीस क्लैप्स वेरी हैप्पीली you know, because we are standing for truth and not for our older egoistic self. So he says that purja purja hoi pade tau na chade khet. And then, even then only, and not even then, he would leave the battlefield because he knows that this shattering is for his own benefit. Because whatever can shatter, must shatter. So that's the obvious. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that example. So shall we call it a day here? Anyone can. Okay. So assuming nothing more at the moment. Just uh, taking the last moment to dedicate the merit, share the merit. So sharing the merit of understanding, collective reflection, delight, joy, clarity with all the sentient beings, including the ones who are very close to us, physically living in the same space as us, as they are also sentient beings, not to forget. May their hearts be content. May all the sentient beings have peace in their hearts, simplicity in their minds, and may we all have fullness in our being. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you, Monica. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you, Malika. Bye-bye.